Southern episode, Jason Barnhart and Stephen Cole talk with Gail Heaston about country ham sandwiches, Southern accents, and living a simple life in the midst of a very complex culture. Gail, cousin of Jason, is a brethren leader, a mother, a grandmother, and so much more. She talks about how she balances the crazy busyness of her life with the slow, simple life of following Jesus. Please enjoy episode five, Simplicity in an Age of Complexity and Inequality. Okay, welcome to another episode of the Brethren Way podcast, where we are exploring uh, the 2018 book of Brethren Way, rediscovering our distinct posture and witness. Uh, today, uh, I'm joined by my esteemed co-host. Can I say esteemed? You shouldn't. Uh, I should. You should not. Uh, most of the time, you're esteemed. Um, just... <laughs> but, but Stephen Cole, uh, the executive director or the Pope uh, of, of the Brethren Church here, if you will. Uh, but uh, with us is, is, is Gail Heaston as we explore simplicity in an age of complexity. Uh, Gail, welcome to the Brethren Way podcast. Thank you for having me. I'm really excited about being here today. Oh, I, I got to say, whenever I hear that Southern accent, uh. my goodness gracious, <laughs> it, it just it does so much for me to be able to hear that. <laughs> just takes you home. Reminds you of country ham sandwiches. <laughs> oh my good country ham sandwich. Well, two things about country ham sandwiches. One, they're amazing, and second, they raise your blood pressure because the salt. <laughs> you know what? It's worth. If if I died eating a country ham sandwich, what a way to go. Listen, of all of these all of these conversations, probably the most southern one we're going to have is probably this one right here. Uh, yeah, that's that's true. I, I, you know, I have to go back and think through all the other ones, but it might be the most southern. And if we're going to talk, start it off with country ham, genius. Yes, yep. absolutely. Genius. <laughs> well, and, and well, for simplicity, it should be from southern people. Should <laughs> We're laid back. There we go. Okay, we, we can call it a day right now. Okay. <laughs> End of podcast. Well, Gail, uh, Aside from being a country ham connoisseur, okay, uh, let us know a little about yourself. Uh, who is Gail Heaston? What makes her tick? Okay, I'm Gail Heaston. I'm from the southeast region of the Brethren Church. I serve as associate pastor at Mount Olive Brethren Church, and I'm the regional resource coordinator for the southeast region. Um, my husband and I live in Elkton, Virginia. We have two children and three grandchildren, and they are the light of our life. And so um, we have God first and our family second is who we, who, how we keep some of our simplicity in mind. Wow. Wow. That's good. You said to the light of your life, I'm going to assume you mean your grandchildren and not yes. all those other people that you had listed before <laughs> your children. Right. The grandchildren. Okay. Good. <laughs> oh my. Well, well, Gail, thanks for being with us today, and uh, really excited about this conversation. And as I've been reminding uh, listeners along the way, uh, this book was sparked by Brian Moore's 2008 book, which he was calling us back to something. Uh, and he was looking out over the horizon of brethrendom. That sounds that sounds terrifying, brethrendom. Mm. Uh, and, and going, there are distinct things from who we have been historically as a people that we need to recapture. And so simplicity was one of those things. Uh, and, and Gail, I'm really intrigued because you just rattled off a lot of different things you're juggling there uh, to hear how simplicity uh, works in your life and, and what you see uh, kind of as, as, it's, as its importance for us moving forward as a brother and people. Uh, but to get us started, uh, on page 44 of, of A Brethren Away, I want to read a little excerpt and kind of just to, to prime the pump here. Brian writes, quote, but simplicity was more of a conviction than a necessity for the brethren. Simplicity was a derivative of trying to follow Jesus in everything. He, above all, was the example of simplicity. Not only did he have no place to even lay his head, but he was occupied with only one thing, to do his father's will. Doing the Father's will was the determinative factor of his entire life. That gave a sense of simplicity to his life. 
and the brethren tried to follow in his steps in this regard. Okay, Gail, I, I read that and I and I think you just told me that you're a mom, you're a wife, you're a grandmother, you're an associate pastor, you're a regional coordinator of the Southeast region. Uh, you're doing this podcast with us right now. How? What does simplicity look like in your life? Because it's not like you just sit around and do nothing. <laughs> right. And I think that's sort of like how everybody is right now in culture. We're all busy. We seem to keep adding to our plates and thinking we can do more and with less time even that we do. But for me, I think the number one thing would be is I always bring it back to Jesus and you know how he lived that simplistic life where his his focus was on god and so in all the craziness and all the busyness especially sometimes when i get so busy that i don't know where which way to go or you know how to prioritize the tasks that are before me i focus on god and i take that time to go back to that and you know that old saying that we used to say what would jesus do that's where i pick my next direction is what would jesus do what, and I think about what honors God and uh, how he would want me to, to focus on him. I think about Jesus, you know, all the people were coming to him constantly for healing, for words, uh, just to be part of what was going on at the time. And the demands on his life were so great. But what he did do was take the few minutes here or there to center on time when prayer with God. And so somehow, and I'm not always the best at it, sometimes I have to actually scheduled in but sometimes we have to work on how we have that time alone with god and get ourselves there and i think if we can get ourselves there we can truly find out what's important in life yeah that's that's good I, i'm 46 in there he does kind of take that he uses a german word i will not attempt to say it uh jason you're more educated than i would you like to attempt to say that german oh, word? there isn't height there you go thank you um <laughs> that idea of you're cut to pieces and trying to find, and he does go on a little bit, and you mentioned it a little bit in what you said, doing a, a New Year's resolution and removing one thing or two things or a few things may not actually lead you to a place. I think he talks a lot a bit about this idea of your life having a unified, a unified vision, a unified understanding, a unified thing that I'm going, I've got 12 pieces I'm caught up into. Mm -hmm. Simply going down to 11 doesn't make me more unified or more having a more guided unified understanding of what to, means to follow jesus even if i cut down to three it doesn't mean i'm it's just that i'm if i don't actually seek out this unifying theme as you've said gail this idea of where was jesus where am i doing how am i following him what the pieces that i do have in play mm -hmm. so as you do that you for yourself maybe even for you jason like, how what does that look like i I don't know if I've got that nailed down. Well, I, I one of the things, Gail, that I, I, I'd like you to talk a little more about because I was intrigued by it is, I think, Stephen, what you just put forward is when we think about simplicity, we think about we've got to do something to make our lives more simple. Mm -hmm. And I think, Gail, what I heard you talking about was, uh, you know, it, I have to in invoke the Danish philosopher Soren Kierkegaard here, okay? Uh, but the, the idea of willing the one thing. Uh, you were talking about this idea of simplicity was not first and foremost cutting things out of the schedule. Simplicity was you gave us a why uh, mm -hmm. being with 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 Jesus. So I'm intrigued, Gail. Like, okay, mo I guess I'm always like intrigued. Like we say things all the time that I'm like I don't think we know what they mean. Okay, so we say spend time with Jesus. We say you know all the stuff here. Do your devotions. Uh, so much so that we don't know what they even mean anymore. They're just things that we say. So when you say spend time with Jesus, Gail, concretely, what does that look like in a day where your calendar has appointments on it? Okay, so okay. spend time with Jesus amid a life that's busy for you. For me, it means to find out that place that I need to be that day, that even if I'm busy, if I'm talking with someone, who needs to just let things out and just be heard, then I'm spending time with Jesus because I'm doing what he wants me to do that day. Or it can even be feeding the homeless. 
and talking to them about Jesus. And so I think if we not only look at like carving out the time for devotions and carving out the time for prayer, but if we look at like what, what I'm doing that day, is it all about Jesus or is it about the busyness of life? Because this world will keep you busy. You know, yeah. I think about young parents nowadays. I don't know how they balance everything that kids are into. My kids weren't into all the ball games and things like that that children are into now. Um, but, um, you know, you, you have to carve out that time when you have that going at you. But when in the normal day of life, I just try to be Jesus wherever I am and try to meet him wherever I am. Yeah, I, I like that, Gail, because part of, part of me is saying, like, I, I often approach simplicity like it's something that I have to add to my schedule. Uh, mm -hmm. So for, from three to four, I'll be simple. Uh, you know, <laughs> But the rest of the day, and I don't know about you all, but I feel like a lot of times my busyness is, is, is caused by my anxiety. Uh, my anxiety that I have to be a certain thing, that I have to, you know, I have to show up at all these things here. And it's, it doesn't really come from, nobody's foisting a busy schedule on me. I pick up a busy schedule and I choose to be busy right. because I fear being left behind. I fear not being recognized. I fear you, you, you name it. Right. It all flows out of my anxiety here. And, and Gail, what I, what I really appreciate about the posture you're, you're inviting us into is this idea of simplicity as a posture of the heart, not necessarily something that I, that I do to my schedule. Mm -hmm. I think that's that's great. I mean, I think Brian wrote this book as a invitation of the 21st century to embrace the things that we had about ourselves as we've started following Jesus together in the 1700s. And this idea of simplicity did turn into legalism for us. Yeah, yeah. Um, but what is it that we're offering folks today? As Gail made it very clear that there's a thousand things for us to do we can chop our calendars and up into tiny little pieces just like you described i'm doing the exact same thing on a regular basis well and, and, and the, the 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 simplicity became a boundary marker for us right. in the 19th century yeah. you'll know who the brethren are because they wear plain clothes yeah, right you know whatever this is here yeah so that's not what we're wanting to offer the 21st century nobody's right. going to <laughs> but, but still but still wanting to capture simplicity as a value that does right. identify us right so but how... that's where it needs to be more of a lifestyle kind of thing than an outward appearance because like even if you think about when the brethren plain dressed like that wasn't being simple really because you had to put effort into being different <laughs> I don't know. That's just my way of thinking about it. Like we had to actually put things in place where we were, we stood out from other people and, and stood out from the culture. And I just think too, like if you bring everything in, like I literally lay some of my days before Jesus and just say, you know, I don't know how I'm going to get this done, but I know that I will through you and I just trust him. And that's sort of this, the, the heart of my simplicity is counting on Jesus to get me through anything that I need to get through that day or anything that I should pick up or I shouldn't pick up. Um, just letting him be the God in my life in, in everything that I do, whether I have an hour here or an hour and a half there, you know, just letting him guide me where I go. Some days I, my family was, I grew up church of the brethren. And so my mom's family, like everything was scripture. We, we, they did, they couldn't carry on a conversation without it being scripture. And so you would ask them something like, are you going to come to my high school graduation? Are you going to come to my wedding? And it was like, Lord willing, you know, <laughs> and you're just like, is that a yes or is that a no? <laughs> yeah. But they had such a trust in that, you know, if God, if it was okay, you know, if God allowed it, they would be there. And they would be present for whatever was in our lives. But if something came up that, you know, Lord willing, they weren't able to be there, then they weren't there. Uh, their thing, their big thing was the uh, building bigger barns. 
<laughs> the foolish man said, you know, what am I going to do with all this stuff I have? I'm going to build a bigger barn. <laughs> and God says, you fool, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to call your life from you. You know, that was big for my family. And they would say, you know, we're not building bigger barns. We're just going to do what God has us to do. And, you know, like for the built for that farmer, you know, he could have given us some of it away. That was their, that was their mentality throughout life. You know, like, I'm not going to stress building a bigger barn. I'm going to stress whatever God wants me to do with whatever he gives me for that day. And so I guess I just grew up with that mentality that you don't really try to plan your days because only God knows what's going to happen that day. And, and I've just been able to go with it from that because that's all I heard. <laughs> yeah. So Gail, I, I'm, I'm just curious, like, uh are are there you know we talk about spiritual disciplines and practices are you know are, are there practices throughout the day of things that you do that call you back to not building bigger barns uh you know it's so good so i mean what is it what does it look does it, i mean do you open your calendar every day and lay your hands on and just pray for jesus <laughs> i mean what does that what does it look like i, I know it sounds like pretty but i i think for a lot of us it's a matter of yeah Let's let's go there. Let's talk about on a very tangible level. What does it look like for Gail Houston to practice what she's preaching right now? Mm -hmm. Really, honestly, I start out every morning with scripture before I open up any kind of app on my phone or anything like that. I do. I, for me, prayer time is geared through scripture. Um, and that's another thing that sort of has helped me in, in life with the simplicity of God and following him like that is I found like prayer time is not a set thing. And I love that about the brethren. Like we don't really, we recognize that God created us uniquely and he knit us to be in relationship with him. And so for some people like myself, I, if I read scripture that it, that helps usher me into the presence of God. For some people, it's sitting down on the porch with a cup of coffee or alongside of a river stream or something like that. But for me, I just open up the scriptures and I just trust in God and just, I literally hand him over my day. I don't sit there and say like, okay, this is what I've got to, I just move from thing to thing. It's sort of like a rhythm for me. It's not so much of a schedule. I just go from thing to thing and I allow to happen whatever happens. And I'm and I've learned to trust God with it. Everything will, will be good. And then I see him in that. Mm. I've seen him in the things that I thought was going to happen in that day and not happen. And I've seen like we have those moments in our life and you both know about this where like my nephew was in a motorcycle crash. Like everything that day that I thought was going to happen changed. But I saw God in that day with us. And so it's for me, that simplistic living is just trusting him because I don't know what my day is going to bring. And so I just trust him to, to be there in all circumstances, good or bad. Mm -hmm. And with my ministry, you know, I've always said, like, I don't have this five-year plan or 10-year plan. And, you know, I've always just gone where God opens the door. And so if he opens a door and I feel his calling into that, I walk in that. I don't want to fight that. I've, I've done that once and it didn't turn out good. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah, that, that's good. I, for a world of people who want to know where they're going and see the, all the steps laid out in front of them before they take that first step, that that's pretty significant because Man, well, how do you, how do you, I don't, I'm not going to, I'm not going to plan my future. I'm not going to know my five-year goal. How many five-year planning sessions have you been in your life mm -hmm. in ministry? No. <laughs> in, 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 right. I mean, we do that all the time. Which we never accomplish what we say we're going to do in five years ever. Right. Okay. Right. But, I, but, I, but I'm also, real quick to that, Stephen, it's so, some of Gail and take this the right way. Okay. Is a matter. It's just like, I, I think a lot of people would say, Gail, that just sounds naive. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and and you, you should give more thought to where you're going to go and where's the purpose and where's the drive here and all that. But I and you know, I'm a person who would say, hey, that sounds great, Gail. And then I would go, I'm not going to do that because I'm not wired like you at all. But I, <laughs> I I I think it's really interesting in this season for me personally, 
I am being met for, by the, the, the spirit's guidance that my life is dictated more by anxiety than I care to admit. Yes. Um, and so I don't start out from a secure place in Jesus. I start out my day with where do I need to perform? Yeah. Impress. Yeah. Network. You know. So Allison, my, my wife is always joking with me. She's like, you know, you you broke from your family. You came to Ashland, and I networked a, a, a way forward. And, and that's what I did, and you know, and that's Ashland has become my home. But she's like, you need to learn <laughs> somewhere that you're not networking for survival anymore. Mm -hmm. You're 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 networking because God wants you to connect with people and be a part of His kingdom purpose. Mm -hmm. But that's survival mentality, you know. And and you know, Gail, my dear cousin here, you know, we we share this Appalachian spirit. Wait, are, of, we, are we letting that out the bag? Oh, I'm sorry, Gail. Gail is, Gail, Gail is a distant cousin of mine. So. Oh, goodness. Okay. Well, so, now they all know. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> she's my beloved cousin. It's your beloved. But the Appalachian spirit is, you know, you 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 need to survive. Yeah. And what happens is I think my anxiety spikes because we're so about surviving yes. that we never experience contentment. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing. Did Go for you, it. Did you call your wife a meddler? Because that sounds like she's meddling a little bit. Allison always meddles, she's always but I don't call her that because I, I'm afraid of her. So hopefully so. she won't hear this. Yes. Uh, well, um, on, in in Brian's mm -hmm. conversation, he takes it out of calendars. He takes it out of busy lifestyles, mm -hmm. and he starts meddling himself and throws it into our finances. And how mm -hmm. boy, so he he acknowledges Alexander Max wealth. Yeah. He tells us that he's wealthy because of his father and his wife's father. And then he tells us that he then lived his life in this idea of simplicity and that he did not live and base his life on wealth. As a matter of fact, when he left his hometown to go to Schwartz now, which ultimately is where we found are founded, he's leaving his security. Use that word. That's what may pop in my head. Yeah. He left his security, his financial network, his 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 family network. He left all of that because Jesus called him away from it. <laughs> Right in forty-seven, Na naive, 47, naive, irresponsible, irresponsible blah, blah, yeah. all the things you yeah. just called your cousin. I get it. <laughs> I mean, he he says in page forty-seven. So this is Brian talking. Simplicity is further implied in the day of crass inequity in distribution of wealth. Boy, well, that's a that's a catchphrase. It'll get you in trouble. Um, and then he goes on in the next paragraph. Uh, continued indulgence of for self and to make favorable impressions on others at the expense of the poor and impoverished finds no support in scripture or in our brethren heritage. Gener generous giving by contrast is one of the most effective expressions of simplicity anyone can practice. Mm -hmm. And that we do have a bit of a frugal streak in us. You think? You think? Yeah. <laughs> for, for if you've been around us long enough, you'll now know that. Um, but that's still security that I think is meant like, I mean, most of us still like our paychecks to be our paychecks. We really don't want them things to be dialed down. Like we, we struggle with it. I think this is very much a point of anxiety. Well, and I, I think, I think, I think of all the episodes, I think this simplicity one is really, really cuts to the heart for us because the, the, the pivot that I want to make here for all of us is, Okay, yeah, we've heard about your life, okay, and but what does this look like for to be a people collectively that, that are marked by simplicity? And I, I I introduced that topic by going, when's the last time you were at a brethren gathering that did not have some high level of anxiety attached to it? Yes, I mean we are an anxious lot. I'm and I'm you know, for some person and goes, how dare you say this? I'm implicating myself as well. And me, okay, we're Gail, anxious. Are you are you anxious sometimes? Oh, yes. I've had that. I've had that. You know, it, some yeah, of it yeah. comes with age. I'm a little bit older than Barney. <laughs> you know, so some of it comes with age. I think I've learned yeah, to I'm trust God. Let, let, let's I'm name not, anxiety right now. <laughs> <laughs> not going to get in there. <laughs> but so some of it has come with that, but some of it, it comes from um, just having God ask me over and over, do you trust me? You know, like one of my highest anxious parts of my life has been raising kids because you fall in love with your children. You fall in love with your grandchildren. You want them to be safe. You want them to be happy. And there's times where I wanted to go in and fix something. 
And then I've had God just like really just smack me with it. Like, do you trust me to take care of your children? Do you trust me to take care of your finances? And yes, it is a naive way of looking at it, but it's a deep and it's a hard way of looking at finances, time management, our family, and being content with what we have. You know, you see it so much with people that just think they have to have more and more and more. Well, when is enough? And when do we begin to trust God? that it's enough, you know, I will admit my husband and I are getting to like looking at retirement age. And so we look at that, do we have enough? But then it's, then the question is begs, do you trust me? And yes, I, he's, he's not let me down yet. Yeah. Well, Gail, I'm, I'm, I'm as you kind of come to an end of this episode uh, and we pivot into what this looks like for us collectively, uh, I want to invite you, okay, I don't want to spike your anxiety here on this, okay, but to channel <laughs> through the go lens ahead. of, through the, are you going to say something, Gail? No, so, go ahead. <laughs> uh, the, through the lens of simplicity, what, what's a word that you would share with the, with the brethren at large about why this is so important for us to be able to recapture simplicity? What are you seeing? What do brethren need to hear? through this word? I think what brethren need to hear through this word so that we can proclaim it to the world is how a faith and a simplistic trust in God, that he loves us, that the great lengths that he has gone to bring us back into relationship to him, also that he has prepared a kingdom for us that is not of this world. If we could just trust in that and have the simplistic trust and love for God and love for Jesus, that we know that no matter what, God is there for us and will be there for us. And, and just to realize that we can trust him because he is a faithful God and we can live a simplistic life. We don't have to add all the trappings that the world wants to add on to us because we have a God that's greater than anything that we could ever put on our plates or in our driveways. Yeah, you know, we have a greater God than any of that. Oh, wow. Well, wow. Well. Okay. I, I, I want to push it a little further now. Okay. Yeah. yeah okay. So <clears throat> let's, let's talk about that word you just shared, which was powerful by the way. Uh, and I, I really do. I'm not just, you know, saying that Gail. I appreciate your calling us back to, being radically Christocentric, just looking to Jesus, trusting Jesus. I, I love the relational call here because I think you're capturing what Brian was talking about. Uh, let's talk about this in-house and out-house, okay? Oh. Okay, so uh, if brethren embraced what you just said there, how do we look different? And let's think about when we gather for conference, when we gather for a regional leadership uh, meeting or you know a regional gathering, how do we look different if we're practicing what you just preached? Oh, yeah. Gave you a stumper here, didn't I? Yes, you did. <laughs> I think when we gather together as Christians, and, and most especially as brethren, is to lean into the power of the Holy Spirit and not worry about, you know, what's going to happen five years down the road or 50 years down the road and just be about the work of Jesus right now and have our hand to the wheel right now about how he wants us to be a witness in our communities. And, and when I look at communities, I look at souls. When I see housing developments, I look at souls in there. And so if we put our hand to the wheel of what we're called to do the, through the great commandment and the great commission, it, you know, all of our planning sessions would go a lot easier, I think, but probably a lot faster. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, so let's build off of that. And, and, and I'm just curious what, when the world, okay, so we did the in-house, now we do the out-house, which I'm realizing now, not, not a great, great choice of words here, but uh, not, it's not down the sound. Appalachian character, okay. <laughs> but uh, what, if we were a people that embraced this radical simplicity, what would the world see when they looked at brethren? 
again, from what we've been going through the last three years in society, and sometimes I would hear things that people would say, and I was just like, it was, it was so foreign to me sometimes because there was such controversy during the last three years. And I had such this trust that no matter what happened, that we would be okay, you know, we're, we're good because we don't have, this is not our end, end game is here. Mm -hmm. And so I think if we could go out with that simplistic trust in God, people would see a calmness in us and mm -hmm. they would wanna know how we go through the things we go through. I know so many Christians that have walked through difficult circumstances and at the end of the conversation, you would hear them say, I don't know how someone who doesn't have faith in God goes through this kind of ordeal in their life. And that is what I think we could achieve is be, we would be such a different people because we would look at things so differently. Wow. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. And I'm thinking the chapter title of this is simplicity in an age of complexity. And uh, Gail, what I hear you inviting us in it too is uh, calmness in an age of anxiety. Mm -hmm. uh, and man, wow, wow. Yes, I mean, we are we are only taught anxiety currently. That is that is definitely mm -hmm. something we we pour out on everything. It's the sauce that gets poured over everything. At least in American culture, that's true. I would think it'd probably be around the world too, but we can definitely say that's true in American culture. And, and to have a witness that says, even in the midst of com complexity, you can still have a simple understanding of what it means to follow Jesus. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think, you know, I was, I was reading an article in, in, in some psychology journal because that's what you do. Um, and, uh, but, but the article went on to say that 95% of the decisions that you and I make throughout the mm -hmm. day, are done in the subconscious. We don't even think about it. Right. 5% is what you are aware of. And then the article went on. Now think about that 5%. What, how much control do you really have? Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and then, but think about the amount of stress and anxiety we pour into that 5% that we're aware of. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And what I appreciate Gail and what I think is a good wrapping up for us is that prayer, scripture, Find the quiet. Uh, this is how we develop that ninety-five percent subconscious, uh, mm -hmm. so that we're we're firing out of Jesus and not out of mm -hmm. I'm trying to get more. I'm trying to do whatever it is. Uh, a good word, Gail. A good word, cause uh, that, when that's... you when you read the scriptures and then when you're in prayer, there comes that peace that you know that we read about in scripture that passes all understanding and and there's a calmness that god gives us through the power of the holy spirit and and it you it just changes who you are that's a great word that's a great word a great call come holy spirit come in your power gail thank you for being on the brethren away podcast and uh really appreciate your insights today by the thank way you. he be paid at least one country ham sandwich the next time he sees you. Are yes. you going to Grand Rapids? Uh, I, 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 I am. Yeah. <laughs> you going to bring one like in your bag and bring in the country? <laughs> I'll yes. bring you. Well, he probably needs about five. But <laughs> I, I eat them like vitamins. Okay, so I do. <laughs> they make me strong. That's beautiful. <laughs> well, again, again, thank you very much, and uh, really appreciate uh, just. Just what you share with us today. Thanks for having me.